Graphs enable you to visually explore and summarize your data. To effectively convey information, your graphs need to be easy to read. To improve readability, you might want to increase the font size on labels or axes, change the colors used, insert annotations, or remove unnecessary details to declutter your graph. Once you've got your graph looking just how you want, you can save it as an image so it can be included in reports. Alternatively, you can save your graph as a GMF file, a special file format that allows you to reload the graph and continue editing it at a later date. If you want to format several graphs in the same way, you can create a custom template so that each graph you create has a standardized look. You can produce many types of graph in GenStat, either by selecting a graph type from the menu or by using the Create Graph dialog to choose a graph that is appropriate for your data. For full instructional help, the GenStat Graphics Guide is available from the Help menu. This coursebook introduces you to GenStat's suite of graphical tools and teaches you how to use them correctly and effectively. Inside the coursebook, you'll find a rich set of examples that demonstrate the range of graphs available and instructions on how you can modify graphs to improve your data presentation. This bar chart was produced from a summary table and shows the mean income earned by people with different qualifications. If you want to download this graph, and use it to follow the steps in this tutorial, you'll find it at the following URL. To open the downloaded graph in GenStat, just double-click the file. There are some problems with how the data is presented in this graph. There are numbers on the y-axis, but no measurement units. The key on the right explains what the bar colors represent, but the colors seem to be randomly chosen and don't enhance the meaning of the data. Let's make some improvements. Double-click the graph to open Editor Mode. We'll start with the Layout tab. I'll change the graph title so that it's more descriptive. Let's change the title font and size too. I'll get rid of the square box around the graph. Click Apply to see your changes on the underlying graph. There are only four bars on our graph, identified by this colour-coded key. A better means of identifying which bar is which would be to remove this key and label the bars directly. Click the Key tab, deselect Display Key, then click Apply to remove the key. To put text labels on the bars, click x-axis and select display labels. Now click apply. The text is a bit small so I'll make the labels larger. I'll remove the x-axis title because the labels we've added make it clear what's being measured. I can make the label orientation perpendicular to the axis but in this case the labels are easier to read when they run parallel. The labels look a bit blurry in editor mode, but they'll look fine on our finished graph. Let's look at the y-axis now. We'll add a title so we can specify what measurement units are being used. There's no number at the top of the y-axis because we're using the maximum data value as the upper bound. I'm going to set the upper bound to 1000 as all our data values are within this limit. To make the bar heights easier to compare, I'm going to draw horizontal grid lines across the graph. Click Grid Pen, then set the options and select Display Grid. Click OK and Apply. The last thing I'm going to do is change the bar colors to make them more suited for black and white publishing. Click Bar Chart Options. 
will make each bar a different shade of grey. Deselect Apply Colour to All Bars. Bar 1 is already selected, so I'll choose a colour for it. Select Bar 2 and choose another colour. Repeat for bars 3 and 4. Click Apply to see your changes. We could change the orientation, but I think the vertical bars convey the information better. Click OK, then Save and Close to reveal our improved graph. If you want to manually add annotations, such as text, symbols or arrows, you can do this using the Add to Graph menu. You can save your graphs as images, so that they can be emailed to colleagues or copied into reports. To save a graph, simply click the Save button, then select a file type. If you have several graphs open, you can save them all by clicking Save All. You'll be prompted to name each one in turn and can select different file formats for each. If you want to save a graph as an editable file, you'll need to save it as a GenStat Meta file. GenStat Meta file is a special GenStat file format that enables you to reload a saved graph into GenStat so that you can continue to edit it. This can be very useful if you're saving lots of graph images for a report and someone asks you to make one little change to one of your images. You can open your saved GMF file rather than having to remake the entire graph over again. To save a graph as an editable file, select File, Save As, then select GenStat Meta File. To open a previously saved GMF file, select File, Open, or File, Open from the Graphics Viewer. Note that it's not possible for graphs saved in other formats to be opened in GenStat. The overall look of a GenStat graph is controlled by the graphics environment. Changing the graphics environment will change the appearance of the graph that is produced. GenStat has several built-in graphics environments, which will display the same graphs in different ways. Alternatively, you can design and save your own graphics environment. This is particularly convenient if you're creating lots of graphs for a report and you want them all to have a certain appearance. This scatter plot uses Microsoft Excel 2010 style graphics environment. And this one on the right uses grayscale graphics environment. My example 2D scatter plot here shows what you would produce using the GenStat default environment. If you're copying my actions in GenStat, you can create this graph by opening the example data sulfur.gsh file and creating a scatter plot of sulfur against wind speed. To make your own graphics environment, select Tools, Graphics Environments. Click New. I'll name this Reports and use the same name for the description. You need to base your new graphics environment on an existing one, so I'll select GenStat Default Environment and click Create. I'm going to add thin horizontal lines by selecting this option. On the axes, the titles and labels are larger than I'd like so I'll reduce the size of these. Make the axis title smaller, change the axis colour, and make the line thinner. The axis labels are the numbers on each axis. I'll change the label colour to match the axis colour. On the Symbols tab, 
I'll change the crosses to circles and also change the colour. Click Apply to change the symbol and colour. Click OK. Our new environment is added to the list in the Graphics Environment dialog. Select the new environment and click Set as Current. This won't update any graphs that are already open. To see our changes, we'll need to recreate the scatter plot. Our new graphics environment has completely changed the appearance of the graph. You can still make manual changes by double-clicking the graph and opening the editor. The customised graphics environment I made won't apply only to scatter plots, but will apply to all graphs I generate. For example, when I create a box plot using the default environment, it looks like this. Then, if I tell Genstat to use my custom graphics environment, it looks like this. If you want to stop using the new graphics environment, simply select Tools, Graphics Environments and choose a different environment to set as current.